Welcome back to another video with us here at LMD NSEM Academy. In this video, we will be working through the June 2015 Unit 1 Paper 2, and we will be working on Question 5, which is a question on buffers. So a buffer consisting of H2PO4- minus and HPO4-2- minus helps control the pH of physiological fluids. Many carbonated soft drinks also use this buffer system. Using the buffer system mentioned above, describe how the solution maintains an almost constant pH, even when small amounts of acid and alkali are added to the solution. So they're asking us to describe the action of buffers. How do buffers work, right? In specific relation to these components, right? So here we go. The first thing we want to do is just write out our equilibrium, right, reaction. So the equilibrium that's set up in this buffer mixture, right? So whenever we're making a buffer, we're gonna add a weak acid to it. And then we're also gonna add the salt of its conjugate base, right? So this equilibrium that gets set up is based on the components that we put in it. So it's a weak acid and the salt of its conjugate base. So the equilibrium is set like this, and that's the pH of that buffer, right? That's the pH that is gonna maintain, right? No matter what, if you add a small amount of acid or a small amount of base. So this is the equilibrium that is set, all right? When I add a small amount of acid, or H plus ions, here's what's gonna happen to maintain that pH, right? Again, buffers are based on the Chatelier's principle. So the shift that will occur is to oppose this change that I'm imposing on the, on the buffer system, right? And this equilibrium here. So when I add acid, right? What's gonna happen? Within the buffer system, the base is gonna absorb that acid. Right? So I add an acid, the base that's within the buffer is going to absorb the acid. And so my equilibrium will then shift to the left. Right? So equilibrium is going to shift to the left in this case. Equilibrium shifts to the left to maintain the pH, right? That's how it maintains the pH in that case. Okay, so the equilibrium is going to shift to the left to maintain the pH of the system. All right. Um, and specifically, the conjugate base absorbs the H plus ions that get added, okay? All right. So we're going to get more of the weak acid pre being present then, okay? If we're shifting to the left. So that's what happened whenever we add an acid to a buffer system. It finds the base, and here we go. We maintain the pH that way, okay? So now let's move on to what would happen in the event that we add a base, right? So here we are now, addition of alkali or OH minus ion. So let's, let's, look, let's think about this critically again. I'm adding an alkali to a buffer system, right? So what? where's the alkali going to go, right? Or what's going to take up the alkali? The acid, right? Remember, you know, you have to think about this is always an acid-base reaction thing going on. So the alkali is going to get consumed by the acid, right? And so what's going to happen? The acid is going to donate one of its protons to the alkali, to push the equilibrium this way, okay? So again, the alkali is gonna donate one of its protons to, the acid is gonna do, donate one of its protons to the alkali because alkali are proton acceptors, acids are proton donors. So this acid that's in the buffer will donate one of its hydrogens to the OH minus ion and become this version again, the conjugate base or equilibrium shifts to the right. So let's just type that out real quick. All right, so the weak acid 
component of the buffer will absorb, right, or react with the OH minus ions that are added in. Okay. Thus, shifting the equilibrium position to the right. This allows the pH of the system to remain constant. Okay, so that's what happened. Remember, it's an acid-based thing going on. So the acid component will absorb the alkali, shift to the right to form more of this conjugate base, and then um, this will allow the pH of the system to remain constant. Okay? So we're ready to move on now. So the next part, part B of this question, asks us to calculate the pH of a soft drink in which the major buffer ingredients are 6.5 grams of NaH2PO4 and 8 grams of Na2HPO4 per 355 cm cube of solution. So that's the, the solution of the buffer, right? How much is, is the volume? 355 cm cube. So here we have the Ka of the H2PO4 minus ion. It's 6.4 times 10 to the minus eight mole per dm cube. And then we're given the relative atomic mass of um, the, the atoms that are present in each of these com buffer components, right? So the first thing that we have to do is just kind of write out, you know, an equilibrium just to get an idea as to what our weak acid is in this system and what our conjugate base or salt is. We're gonna need to know which is which if we're gonna be able to find the pH, okay? So I just kind of wrote out this up front. I have my NaH2PO4. I see that I have a Na2HPO4. So I know that this was the deprotonated form. So I know that this would have been my conjugate base and this would have been my weak acid, okay? All right. So remember, we're taking 6.5 grams of this and we're adding it in to 355 cm3 and we're taking... 8 grams of this, and we're adding it into 355 cm cube, a total 355 cm cube volume, and that's how we're making the buffer. That's how we make the buffer, okay? So if I need to find the pH, I have to use an equation, very, very big equation in this area of buffers known as henderson hassel balk equation. So it's this equation here that I've boxed here, and it says that the pH is going to be equal to the pKa plus the log to the base 10 of the ratio of the salt concentration to the acid concentration, okay? So that's what we need to use to find the pH of any buffer solution and certainly what we will use in this case here. So we need to find the pH. Um, we don't know explicitly the pKa and we don't know explicitly the concentrations. And so we're gonna have to find these and plug them in at which point we'll be able to find our pH, okay? So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna find the pKa, this first term. Let's focus on finding this first term, pKa, right? So the pKa, as we know from a formula standpoint, right, we need to find all of these guys, right? The pKa is gonna be equal to the negative log of the log to the base 10 of the Ka. Right, so that's negative log to the base 10 of this Ka here, right? That's the Ka for our weak acid. So we're gonna find that here by using this formula. And so when we plug that all in, we come up with a pKa value of 7.194. So I've already gotten that part, so that's good. Now we have to find the concentration of the salt and the concentration of the acid. So let's find the concentration of the salt first. To find the concentration of the salt, we're gonna do moles of the salt present per unit volume, right? That's literally what concentration means, moles per unit volume. And so to find the moles, that's the top part, I will do the mass of the salt that's being added, which is eight grams. 
And I'll divide that by the molar mass of the salt, which is 142 gram per mole. And then once I get that moles, I'll divide that by the volume and I'll come out with a concentration of 0 0.159 mole per dm cube. That's my salt concentration, okay? Now I need to find my acid concentration and I'll do it in a similar way as I did for the salt. So my acid concentration will be the moles of the acid per unit volume, right? And so... I'll find the moles of the acid by dividing the mass that they gave us, 6.5 gram, by the molar mass of that acid, which is 120 grams per mole. So the molar mass of this guy, right? And so I'm going to divide that moles that I got by the volume of the solution, which is 0 0.355 dm cubed. You may have noticed that I had to convert that to dm cubed. So that's just what I have here in dm cubed. And so when I do that moles of acid divided by the volume of the solution, I come up with a concentration of 0 0.153 mole per dm cube. And so now I'm ready to plug in everything into my henderson hasselbalch equation, and then I'll get my pH finally. Okay, so let's see what that turned out to be. So here it is. Here it is now. Uh, my pKa was 7.194. My concentration of my salt was 0 0.159. For my acid, it was 0 0.153. And so when I did that and I logged it, I got 0 0.0166. And I just added that to my pKa. And so my pH turned out to be 7.21. And so with that, you know, that's the answer here, right? That's all we had to go through, all those steps in order to get our pH of this um soft drink here, which has these buffer components, okay? Okay, so let's move on now to part C. And part C says many chemical reactions occur in living systems, such as the human body. Discuss the importance of biological buffers to the maintenance of a healthy body. Include an example of a chemical reaction of a blood buffer, okay? Okay. So here is how we discuss the importance of those now. So biological enzymes will only work at pH values close to pH 7. Organisms depend on natural buffers or these biological buffer systems within our body to help to keep the pH constant in various parts of the body. For example, the pH of the blood is approximately pH 7.4. And a number of blood buffers help to maintain this pH. One such example of a blood buffer is amino acids. But you may know right here that there are other blood buffers that you could have mentioned. You could have mentioned um, the phosphate buffer system. You could have mentioned the hydrogen carbonate buffer system. You could have mentioned protein buffers as well, okay? But this is my favorite example here is amino acids. And so I just want to show, they want us to include an example of a chemical reaction of a blood buffer. So I'm going to show how the amino acids act as buffers within our bodies, as blood buffers to be exact. Okay. So I'm going to draw the structure of a zwitta ion of the most common or the simplest amino acid. So that's glycine. So I'm going to draw glycine in zwitta ion form. So it's just going to be that that's that the carboxylic um, acid group will be deprotonated and my amine group will be protonated, right? That's how it exists as a zwitta in zwitta ion form. So right here, it has a neutral pH, okay? So that's about a pH of about seven, right? Neutral. That's how the amino acids exist naturally in our bodies in aqueous solution, okay? No. If I were to add some acid, so say I ate something really acidic and my blood has this optic of H plus ions in it because I ate something acidic, here's what's going to happen, right? My acidic portion is going to get absorbed by this conjugate base here. And so what I'll end up with then is I'll end up with this form of it where my amine or my weak acid form is still here. Um, and then I'm going to have the this carboxylate ion is going to get protonated by the acid. And so I'll end up with that as COOH, right? And so when that happens, right, we, we resist changes in this pH, okay? 
And so that's what would happen if I, uh, if I ate something really acidic or my blood saw something really acidic. So now imagine if I added OH now, imagine that this is a situation where I have something really alkaline that's spiking, you know, in my blood. Um, the amino acid, how it would work, right, is that here we have a base. We know that bases are what? They're acceptors of proton. So this base, really what's going to happen is that this portion here, right, which would have been um, a conjugate acid, right, is going to donate one of its protons. It's going to donate one of its protons to the OH, right? And so what's going to happen if it donates one of its protons? It's going to go to the amine group form where we're just going to have H2N now. And then the other portions of the molecule remain the same um, as well as that remaining deprotonated there, okay? So that's what would happen. And so... What we're saying here is that this would donate one of its protons to the OH, right? And then that would, would have water leaving as well as a result of that transfer there. But at the end of the day, we'll be able to maintain this pH of seven because we have this natural built-in buffer system that's present in our amino acids, okay? And so with that, we've come to the end of this question. Consider subscribing to the channel. And if you look here, right, on your left, you will see the next video up. If you look on your right, you will see the module two playlist where there are tons of other content for you to indulge in and get yourself ready for this exam, okay? Thanks for watching and see you in our next video.